Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. A young woman from a prestigious family loses her father. Included in her inheritance is a cellar in the woods that holds a secret that could destroy her life. Today we will recap the story of the 2020 movie The Inheritance. While performing her morning run, Lauren Monroe, a district attorney and the daughter of Archer Monroe, relives the moments that led up to her hearing about her father's death. This is also interspersed with footage of her father's last moments. In her recollections, she is being interviewed about a huge case outside the courthouse when one of the journalists unceremoniously breaks the news of her father's death to her. She is in shock. She doesn't say anything more and has to be led away from the horde of reporters. As she gets to this point in her recollection, she stops mid-run and puts her hands on her head. The whole family Lauren, her husband Scott, her daughter Claire, her mother Catherine, and her brother William are all present at the cemetery as the minister recites the funeral rites. They then head home in convoy. At the house, Emilio, a policeman close to Lauren, drops his condolences and leaves. William and Lauren discuss getting their mama house closer to them. He also adds that he is only staying for the reading of the will as he has to be back on the campaign trail. Lauren spends some time in her father's study before coming out for the reading of the will. While there, she remembers some of her father's lessons. Harold, Archer Monroe's lawyer, reads the will with only the family present. Catherine gets control of the company and estates, William receives $20 million, the police and firemen's fund, and Harvard School of Medicine get $50 million, while Lauren receives $1 million. However, Harold gives an envelope to her in private that is meant for only her. He assures her that her father was proud of her despite the relatively little inheritance he left to her. She finds a flash drive and a key in the envelope. Saved in the flash are directions to a secret located on the house grounds. She goes out in search of this secret. On her way out, Scott stops her and she tells him that she just wants some time to herself. As she makes her way there, she remembers when her father stopped her from playing in that area of the compound. The secret is a cellar. Lauren opens the wooden cover and walks to the end of the darkened hallway. She opens a door and is startled to see a sleeping, rough-looking man with a collar on his neck. She walks over to him, but as she tries to touch him, he moves. Terrified, she runs all the way back to the house. She stops to compose herself before she goes in because she is panting uncontrollably. She calls 911 but decides against reporting what she just saw. William notices her discomfort, but she brushes it away. He offers to split his share, but she declines. She tells him to use it for his campaign. The next scene shows Lauren and her mother on the balcony. Her mother reassures her that her father was proud of her when she notices Lauren's mood. Lauren asks about any of her father's enemies that she should be scared of. Her mother tells her that it is not in her place to worry about that. After William, Scott, and Claire leave, Lauren returns to her father's study. She recalls her disagreement with her father over her decision to be a DA. Early the next morning, she goes back to the cellar. This time, the man in the cellar is lying down. She takes his fingerprint and initially runs out when she notices that his eyes are open. However, she goes back. She goes in wearing a mask. She asks for the man's identity but instead, he tells her all about herself and tells her to remove the mask. She complies. He asks her about her father, and although she doesn't answer, he deduces that he is dead and offers his condolences. When she asks him to identify himself again, he demands food, a bottle of scotch, and a pack of Gulwa's cigarettes. She scoffs at his demands. As she is leaving, he asks her to leave the light on. She agrees. She sends the fingerprints she collected to Emilio to run them through the system and goes to get the food the man in the cellar asked for. As she returns to the cellar, Scott calls to check on her and remind her of Claire's recital. She lies that she is headed into court and promises not to miss their daughter's recital. She takes the food to the prisoner. Immediately she drops the food on the table, she starts asking questions. He deflects and says that she is a better person than Archer. He asks about Catherine, and Lauren sternly warns him not to mention her family. As she leaves, she tells him that if she doesn't get answers the next time she comes, he will never see her again. As she steps out of the cellar, her assistant calls to inform her that the court is starting. She tells him to handle that day's court proceedings but he is scared of the opposing lawyer. She promises to be there soon and hangs up. She returns to the cellar and gives the prisoner the bottle of scotch and a bar of chocolate. He tells her about the pictures of him that her father took. When she returns from seeing them, he tells her his name is Morgan Warner. He stretches his hand for a handshake and when she obliges, he holds onto her hand for some seconds. He realizes himself, releases her hand and apologizes, explaining that it has been a while since he had human contact. He eventually begins his story by talking about how he and Archer enjoyed gambling and womanizing in their younger days. He then talks about how after taking a few drinks, he and Archer set off for the city to watch a big game. Archer was driving when they knocked over a young man. Archer declined to call the police despite Morgan's advice. He eventually buried the guy at a deserted spot in the woods. After burying the guy he knocked down, Archer knocked Morgan over and took him to the cellar while unconscious because he did not want him to reveal what happened that night. Morgan says that he begged Archer to finish him. However, as time passed, Archer couldn't bring himself to finish him. 
However, he offered Morgan an opportunity to end his own life, but Morgan declined. He tells Lauren that his life will be his revenge against Archer. He also tells Lauren about Archer's mistress, Sophia Fiore. He gives her the woman's address and asks her to confirm from Harold when she doesn't believe him. Annoyed, she storms out, but not before threatening to leave him in the cellar if he is lying. On her way to the courthouse, she calls Emilio and tells him to search for a missing person in the late 80s named Morgan Warner. She apologizes to the judge for arriving late. The next few scenes show Morgan's routine in the cellar. After the court session, Lauren goes to the address for Sophia Fiore that Morgan gave her. She finds Sophia. Sophia tells her that she shouldn't have come, but Lauren replies that she is trying to put the pieces back together. She discovers that Sophia has a son, Alex, through his pictures in his mother's house. She becomes visibly agitated. However, Sophia assures her that Alex doesn't know about Archer's other family. She goes to confront Harold about Sophia. Harold advises her to walk away, adding that Sophia signed a non-disclosure agreement and would never let the cat out of the bag. As she leaves, she asks Harold if Archer ever mentioned the name Morgan Warner to him. Harold says the name does not sound familiar. Lauren pops in at William's campaign office and meets her mum there. She asks about Morgan Warner, but Catherine doesn't know anybody with that name. William invites her to speak at his campaign rally the next day. She says she barely has the time, but he manages to convince her. She heads back to the cellar. Morgan gloats about his being right about Sophia. Morgan asks Lauren to take the collar off his neck, but she ignores him. Instead she asks if he knows more stuff about her father. He tells her that Archer always told him what was going on in his life. He calls Archer a bad father, husband, and friend and tells Lauren that her father was proud of the mother she had become. Lauren says that she is a good parent because her father was not. When she questions his story about the body Archer buried, he tells her to dig it up. However, he says he wouldn't be able to describe the place unless she takes him there. The next scene shows Morgan with a coat on and Lauren unlocking the collar. She leads him out of the cellar at gunpoint. When he steps out, he is overwhelmed by his first glimpse of the outside in 30 years and thanks her. She snaps him out of his reverie and urges him on. Scott calls her and scolds her for not picking up his calls or reaching out. He also reminds her that she missed Claire's recital. She apologizes and ends the call abruptly, saying that she cannot talk at the moment. Lauren drives while Morgan gives directions. They eventually arrive at the spot in the woods. Morgan offers to dig but Lauren isn't having any of that. He goes to sit on a fallen log while she digs. She keeps digging for some time while he smokes a cigarette. She complains that she might just be wasting her time. He tells her to keep digging. As she returns to digging, her shovel strikes something hard. She calls out to him to bring the light. She goes down on all fours and uses her hand to remove the remaining soil. She sees parts of a skeleton. She hurriedly pours the sand back into the hole with her hands. She remains dazed as she drives back home. She leads him back to his room in the cellar at gunpoint. She then tells him to put the collar back on. He doesn't, and they argue. He appeals to her sense of justice and compassion to set him free now that he has shown her proof. At this point, Lauren is highly agitated, almost in tears, but she doesn't back down. He falls to his knees and makes one last plea, but she is adamant. Realizing that she isn't about to set him free yet, he puts the collar back on, and she locks it. He promises her that he will just vanish if she frees him. However, she just removes the cuffs and goes out. As she closes the door, he screams her name. Back in the house, she is having a mental breakdown. She calls Emilio about the missing persons list she asked for, and he replies that he doesn't have it. She then gets flashbacks of some of her arguments with her father. She also remembers some words that Morgan said. Eventually, it ends with her smashing a picture of Archer and her as a baby into pieces. She goes back home to her family. She finds Claire and Scott in bed. She joins them and apologizes to Claire. The following day she heads to court. As she arrives, she tells her assistant to fill her in on what has happened. He shows her a list of shell companies. She focuses on the list, only stopping to stand up when the judge comes into the courtroom. She keeps reading while a witness is giving his testimony. Suddenly, she sees something interesting and becomes lost in thought. The judge has to call her thrice to get her attention. Immediately the court is adjourned, she rushes out. She goes to confront Harold about what she found. It turns out that the information implies that Archer is a co-conspirator with the guy she's prosecuting. Harold tells her once again to walk away. She goes to William's office to ask him for advice. She asks him what he would do if someone threatened their family because he had some privileged info about them. He answers that he would either pay off the guy or dump his body in the river. He then adds that she knows what Archer would have done. Lauren is deep in thought as she walks to the cellar. When she gets to Morgan's room, she makes him promise to vanish if he is released. Before leaving, she drops a duffel on the floor and instructs him to clean up because he is leaving that night. She meets with Harold in an underground car park. She tells him to set up a Cayman Islands account, put a million dollars in it and prepare 100k in cash. He tries to find out the reason for these instructions, but she tells him that she cannot tell anyone about it. He then says he hopes she knows what she is doing. She tells him to call her when it is all done. 
When she gets back to the cellar, Morgan is putting on new clothes and finishing up with his hair. She asks him about what Archer said about her. Morgan tells her that Archer wasn't initially happy with her decision to be a city attorney. He felt she should become a litigator and protect the family's interests. Morgan added that Archer also felt insulted when she became DA and started going after his friends. However, he had begun to see things differently before he passed away. Morgan also implies that William might have paid off the union leaders for their votes. When Lauren disagrees, he drops a name. In the next scene, Lauren confronts William with the name. The owner of the name happens to be the middleman that helped William arrange the deal with the union reps. William tries to justify it by saying every other politician cuts deals. However, Lauren is more annoyed that William had initially lied to her. When he implies that she became DA through the deals that he and their father made, she cuts him off with a slap, tells him never to lie to her again, and walks away. Dressed in a clean suit, Morgan is ready to leave the cellar. Before leaving the cellar, he picks up a chess piece from the board on the table. When he steps out, he uses a few moments to take in the sights, sounds and smells of the world around him, while Lauren waits for him. They drive to a private airfield where Harold awaits them with a sleek jet. Before he boards the plane, Morgan shows Lauren a page of a magazine he had been keeping that contained the recipe to make key lime pie. He says that it is one of the things that had kept him all his years in captivity. As he turns to leave, she calls him back and threatens to pin all the cold cases of the last 30 years on him if he ever comes back or says a word to anyone. Morgan chuckles when he hears this and nods his head. With Morgan safely on his way to the Caymans, Lauren returns to the cellar to clear it. She picks stuff from the shelves and puts them in a black trash bag. Meanwhile, Emilio finds the missing person file. He sends a voicemail to Lauren informing her that he is sending it to the Monroe Summer House as Lauren instructed. Meanwhile, Catherine arrives at the Summer House and finds Emilio's package at the door. She walks into Archer's study, sees that it is scattered and calls out for Lauren. When Lauren comes out of the cellar, she sees Emilio's message. She hurried into the house, looking for her mom. She finds Catherine looking through the contents of the package Emilio sent. Her mom asks her what she's doing with Morgan's info, and she says it is about work. Her mom then tells her that the man's name isn't Morgan but Carson. Her mother tells her that Morgan Carson is pure evil. She then asks Lauren about Carson's whereabouts. Lauren tells her that she let him go because she thought she was doing the right thing. She says she will handle it and tells her mom to lock the doors. On her drive to the airfield, she dials Harold's number, but it goes to voicemail. She finds Harold knocked out cold beside the jet and rushes back out. On her drive home, she tries to reach her mom, but it goes to voicemail. She is in tears as she pulls into the summer house. She looks all around the house for her mom but doesn't find her. She runs to the cellar and finds her mom on the floor of the room where Morgan was kept. Her mom is unconscious. As Lauren tries to get her to come around, Carson appears in the hallway, calls her name and switches off the light. She puts on a flashlight and goes looking for him. He teases her by talking to her while she looks all over the cellar for him. He eventually attacks and overpowers her after a brief scuffle. He then drags her off to his former room. Lauren eventually comes around. Carson tells her about his attempt to poison Archer. He says he had lost hope in his plan working until she arrived. He says he noticed her compassionate side and took advantage of it by playing the victim. He adds that William would have left him to rot in the cellar. At this point, Catherine wakes up and Carson switches his attention to her. Lauren tells him to leave Catherine alone, that the issue is only between them. Carson tells her that she is wrong. He then tells the story of how he raped Catherine at a party organized by Archer at the summer house. Apparently, Catherine reports him to Archer and Archer beats him up and bundles him into the car and drives off. Archer knocks down a young man and decides to bury him. Back in the present, Carson says that it was at that moment he knew he owned Archer. However, he adds that he did not expect Archer to knock him out and then throw him into the cellar. As time went on, Archer started venting to Carson. Catherine says that she should have ended Carson's life herself and Carson slaps her. Lauren asks for his demands. He answers that he wants his pound of flesh. She promises to testify to all the secret dealings of her father if Carson leaves her family alone. He replies that he doesn't cut deals. Carson then outlines his plans to leave Lauren and Catherine to rot in the cellars while he goes after William and destroys the family's legacy with the secrets he knows. Lauren takes on a different tack. She calls him a pathetic lunatic and says nobody cares for him. This infuriates him and he attacks her, throwing her against the wall. He then tells her that he is her father. This revelation knocks the wind out of Lauren. However, Catherine has somehow gotten up, and she shoots him in the back of the head. She shoots him two more times after he falls. She then goes to sit with Lauren and assures her that she is a Monroe. They douse the cellar in petrol, set it on fire, and watch it burn. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.